I know I talk about the declining birth rates, the global birth rates quite a bit, but in the United States, I want to drive home the fact that the decline is coming mostly from the, the drop in teen pregnancies and the drop in 20 somethings if you look at these lines, and these are numbers from 2007 to 2023, you see these lines that are just declining, 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 which is amazing to me. And if you look here, the numbers for the 30 year olds and over are pretty much remaining, um, they're remaining steady. So what does that say to you? For the longest time, so many people were saying things like, if you can't afford to have children, don't have them. We were tackling teen pregnancy because it's such a shame that these teenagers are out here having babies, despite the fact that many times these teen girls were having babies by adult men. We have had Republicans gutting social safety nets since Reagan's era, and People are now hand-wringing, doing all this hand-wringing because now everything that they have said regarding the birth rate, overpopulation, and the like, especially the don't have children if you can't afford it, people, women, women and girls were actually listening. These women and girls knew and understood the assignment. They said, I bet. And because of that, um, girls graduating from high school, instead of having children, they are going off to college, which makes sense. And so that is one of the main reasons why women and girls are outnumbering boys and men in college six to four, which is great, right? Now, I did mention the Republicans cutting social safety nets since the Reagan era. And let's be honest, many of these people are in red states and in dire need of these social safety nets. They just keep saying no to everything because they believe that everybody else who they deem unworthy might actually get some of these social safety nets. Now, this was um, an article put out last year. The GOP hates the social safety net, but their voters need it. In the singling out of federal programs for the deepest cuts during the haggling over raising the debt ceiling, the GOP is tapping into the myth that those who rely on public assistance are undeserving and can't be trusted to responsibly receive government benefits. It goes back to President Ronald Reagan's elevating and exaggerating an anecdotal welfare queen who drew checks from multiple agencies and spent the money on luxury food and drinks. Democrats recoiled from the characterization, rightly so. This was belittling lower income people who were the, de who were the Democrats base. Now, when he also talked about welfare queen, it was to invoke a colored woman when it was, it was literally a mixed woman who was out here doing this, but some kind of way, the blowback on black women and lower income people, it was evident. It was a dog whistle of sorts. What's different today is that a lot more of the people, depending on government assistance, vote Republican. They work low income jobs and they're the ones who will be hurt by the deals of the GOP wants. You can't have the kind of cuts the Republicans are talking about without hurting people. And a lot of those people are going to be Republicans. So this is not necessarily about the birth rate. This is about the social safety nets that Republicans were consistently cutting since the 80s. So th this is just a reminder that many of the things like SNAP, um, Section 8, TANF, all of that were X'd because certain people were undeserving in certain people's eyes. So many of these lower income, um, poverty stricken Republican voters would um, cut off their nose to spite the coloreds. Now you can ask 10 different women without children why they chose to not have children or maybe why they are one and done. And you could virtually get 10 different answers. Um, the cost of living is way too high for the wages that we're getting paid. Um, the decline in religion means that, you know, now we are not pressed to have children. As the patriarchy decreases and the religiosity decreases, women, maybe they just don't want to have kids because we're not trying to do that sacrificing. Some people blame feminism for why women are opting out, but also feminism is liberation. Some women just simply chose differently because they didn't want to be um painted into that box that that is all you're good for was being an incubator and a bang bang. 
now. Um, there are other reasons like the cost of childcare and the scarcity of childcare. In some places, childcare costs as much as someone else's rent or mortgage. Now, if you are out here paying student loans and you know you're barely surviving, some women might second have a second thought about having kids. So um, Robert Robert Reich or Robert Reich, maybe it's Robert Reich. He put out this tweet. Now this tweet is from 2021, but he said Norway spends about thirty thousand dollars per child on early childcare. Finland spends twenty um, twenty three thousand. Germany eighteen thousand. The U.S. spends five hundred dollars per child. In other words, one sixtieth of what Norway spends on its toddlers. How do we expect to build a better future if we refuse to invest in our kids? Now, J.D. Vance recently said something about daycare or childcare is class warfare or something. They want us to have children, but childcare is expensive or scarce. So like even if it is available in your area, it might just be way too expensive. And some people are having to put their kids on um, on wait lists or every on or something. And the crazy thing is in our current economy, because of the cost of living that I've already mentioned, both parents have to work. So if women are if women can't go to work because there's no child care or child care is too expensive, why would a woman without children choose to have kids? Because men are not impacted the same way. I am specifically talking about women and I happen to be a woman. Some other um, reasons, ch um, climate change and some women simply just don't want to have kids, period. That's the end of it. No more discussion. Something else to think about is the gender wage gap. Now, the gender wage gap mostly comes into effect if a woman has children because of the mommyhood penalty. When the women are single, their trajectory as far as how much money they make is pretty much on par to single men. And men's earnings don't take a hit the way women's do. So is it is it weird that women are opting out when they know that their money is going to take an, a hit? Absolutely not. This is something that women do know and understand. Um, so this was an article from Vox back in 2020, I mean, 2018. A stunning chart shows the true cause of the gender wage gap. Now, I know that this is not necessarily about the birth rate, but sometimes women simply just don't want to impact their money. Now, this um, this research was done out of Denmark, and Denmark has some, some robust social safety nets but their gender wage gap is still just as high um, as America. So that's the reason why I'm going to use this, despite the fact that the research comes out of Denmark. So this chart is titled, Women's Earnings Drop Significantly After Having a Child, Men's Don't. And if you look at this chart, you see the pink line um, and blue line right here are pretty much equal, 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 but a woman has her first child, bam, her earnings drop, and they don't typically recover. This is the motherhood penalty. Single women without children will continue to have that same trajectory as men, because like I said, men with kids, their earnings do not drop dramatically. There is no fatherhood penalty. Um, actually, there is a fa fatherhood bump up where they actually end up getting more money being um, married with children because kids and a wife is more of a social status. Now I want to show the chart for women with kids and women without kids. For a woman without kids, her trajectory would continue to go up, up, up because she does not face that mommyhood penalty. The mommyhood penalty drops a woman's um, potential earnings and then she pretty much stays there because women with kids have to think about things like um, taking time off because a child is sick, because they're sick and they don't have a babysitter and they have to work certain hours because their kids go to school and school's hours really can jack up your work schedule if you're not work from home. There are so many reasons why women's earnings cannot recover. And some, some single women will look at this and take all of this into consideration. Now, um, there are so many reasons, but I do wanna hear yours. If you have opted out or chosen to be a one and done or whatever, please weigh in. Let me know your reasons and don't forget to like, comment and share.
I look at many of these Asian countries because they are in their find out season. Many of their policies is what directly led to what we're seeing right now as far as their birth rates. And I look at them because I know that America is marching right down into their find out season, the way they are passing these laws and trying to restrict women. I can see um, the United States going the same way, even though the, the laws are going to be a little bit different than what the Chinese, the South Koreans, um, and the Japanese have done with their women and their birth rate. But I still want to talk about this article. The birth rate woes hit China where schools are closing because there aren't enough children. Now, I want to talk about this because these birth rates and these birth rate declines have real world impacts um, because of, you know, there's not enough children. Um, it's going to hit real estate. It's going to hit other businesses that might service children. Um, so all of this works hand in hand. And we need to watch what is going on in some of these other countries to know and understand what could happen here in America. Several Chinese provinces are cutting back on teacher recruitment because of the falling numbers of school children in recent years. This is a reflection of the country's worsening demographic challenges. Deep cuts in teaching positions, widely regarded in China as stable and socially respected, add further uncertainty to the already bleak jobs market. The country is grappling to create enough work for its massive labor force, especially new graduates. Education authorities in eastern province of Jianji said this year's new preschool, primary, and secondary school teaching positions would be cut by 54.7% to 4,968, less than one third of its recruitment two years ago. That happened in two years. That is quite dramatic. In neighboring Hubei province, recruitment of school teachers has dropped one fifth over the same period. The main reason for the fall appears to be the declining numbers of school children. China has been experienced a period of ultra low fertility with fewer than 1.4 live births per woman over a lifetime. Remember that America is sitting at 1.62. The China Population and Development Research Center estimates that the total fertility rate dropped to 1.09 in 2022, while the number of births have halved between 2016 and 2023 to 9 million. Xi Jinping's Education Department acknowledged the challenge in an official reply to suggestions on system reform at the end of June. The low fertility rate will become one of the main risks for the country's population development, it said. According to Jiangxi authorities, the province's population share of children aged 0 to 15 has fallen in each of the past four years with a drop of 480,900 um, last year, the biggest decline since 2020. Education resources must be restructured in response to the decreasing fertility rate, the department said, noting the closure of one-fifth of schools in the province's rural areas with fewer than 100 students. In similar situation in Hunan province in central China, last year prompted education authorities to announce there will be no new kindergartens built in rural areas. The number of children in Hunan's kindergartens decreased by 14.79% to 319,400 in 2023 compared to the previous year. The same pattern occurred across the country with national data showing a decrease in the number of preschool children for the third consecutive year. According to the Ministry of Education, there were fewer than 275,000 kindergartens last year, a drop of 14,800 from 2022. Enrollments declined in the same period by 5.35 million to 40.9 million. That is a lot of a million drop, 5.35 million decline. That's wild. Rural areas are under greater pressure from the demographic changes, according to Dong Jingying, president of the Guangdong Social Sciences Association in southern China. As the population urbanizes and concentrates in larger and medium-sized cities, rural areas experience a decrease in population, which also leads to a reduction of preschool students, Dong told business media outlet ZZKai.com. So that's the end of the, um, of the article. It's just a reminder that 
not having a bunch of kids is going to impact the United States. And the way that these republic, these red states, these forced birther states are going to drive women and girls out of their states, I really can see many of them becoming old ghost towns. They're going to get older. And they're going to have to try to figure something out because as they get older and women decide not to have kids in their um, in their states or they just drive women out, who's going to take care of those old people? This is going to be very interesting to watch and know and understand what's going to happen because some cities, some states will be impacted more than others. And it's going to be really interesting to watch the demographic shift. But you guys weigh in. Do you see where I'm going when I am talking about these um, Asian countries and how it could foreshadow what is going on in the United States? All right. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment and share.